Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to yet another Sunday School online class arranged by the Mathoma Sunday School Samajan. I am really glad to be with you all this week once again to continue our study on the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, the book written by Reverend Dr. K. K. George. Let us begin this day, this study with the word of prayer. Loving Heavenly and Gracious Father, we thank you and we praise you for this beautiful day that you have given us. As we gather together to learn about you, we ask that you may be here present with us. Help us, O Lord, that all the children may be able to listen and retain what they are hearing. We pray that the lessons that are taught will help them to grow and be like you. Continue to be with us as we move forward in studying your word. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I am sure that you all might have gone through the previous lessons and you all are updated where we have reached till now. Uh, just a quick recap uh, before we begin today's class. We have seen that uh, the narratives of Jesus Christ is presented before us uh, we can we can we, we are able to understand who Jesus is through the gospel writers the gospel writer Matthew Mark Luke and John it is these gospel writers who present Jesus before us and we have seen that each gospel writer have presented Jesus in a unique and a different manner we have dealt with that in the earlier classes we have also seen the both narratives and how different gospel writers have presented the birth narratives before us. And in the last class, if you remember, we have seen the preparations that were necessary before the public ministry of Jesus began. Today we will be looking at the public ministry of Jesus. Now when we, before we begin understanding the public ministry of Jesus, we need to understand that the public ministry of Jesus does not somewhat have an orderly manner. When I say an orderly manner, it is not recorded in a chronological order. Now when we look at the birth narrative, we can find a chronological order which the Gospel writer Matthew and Luke tries to give to us. But when we look at the public ministry of Jesus, it is difficult for us to have to, to find such a chronological order. Each Gospel writer we can see that they have they have their own pattern to record the information that they had. When we look at the Gospel writer Saint Matthew, we see that the Gospel writer Saint Matthew put together all the information that he had connected with a particular topic. When it comes to the Gospel writer Saint Luke, we see that Luke has recorded the happenings in Galilee and Jerusalem as two separate collections. And both Matthew and Luke, they have not given too much of an importance to chronology. But when we look at the Gospel according to Saint Mark, we find a slight difference. The Gospel writer Mark tries to present or tries to give some chronological order as he writes the Gospel. For example, he, the Gospel writer Saint Mark has given the timing of certain incidents. Few examples that we can find looking into the gospel is in Mark chapter 2 verse 23 we see that this particular portion, this particular verse refers to the disciples plucking the ears of grain and that is the beginning of summer. <clears throat> Mark chapter 6 verse 39 it refers to green grass which is the beginning of spring season. And when we look at the story of Passover as recorded in the Gospel according to St. Mark, we see that in the Passion narratives, it indicates the month of April. So as we combine all these timings or the incidents that are recorded in St. Mark, we can see that it included three spring seasons. So one thing can be concluded that Jesus' ministry lasted not less than two years. It was more than two years. Is something that we can conclude reading the gospel according to Saint Mark. 
But of all the four Gospels, <clears throat> it is the Gospel according to St. John, who the Gospel writer St. John, who tries to record the events in a chronological manner. And we, when we look at the Gospel, we see that there are seven incidents which points to the time of occurrence. And those seven instances are, in John chapter 2 verse 13, the Passover, which takes place in the month of April. John chapter 4 verse 35, which is the harvest, which takes place in the month of May. John chapter 5 verse 1, we see the Pentecost, which happens in the month of June. John chapter 6 verse 6, the second Passover, again in the month of April. John chapter 7 verse 2, the Feast of Tabernacle, which happens in the month of October. John chapter 10 verse 22, the Feast of Dedication, which happens in the month of December. John chapter 11 verse 55, we find the third Passover again in the month of April. So when we look at the Gospel according to St. John, we can see that the Gospel writer St. John records three Passover seasons. Even though it is not directly mentioned in the Bible or in the Gospel that Jesus' ministry took place for three years, it is generally believed, looking at the Gospel according to St. John, the occurrences that, the incidences and the chronology, the timings that we can find in the Gospel according to St. John, it is generally believed that Jesus' public ministry lasted for three years. Now of these events, of all the public events that are mentioned in the Gospel, the beginning and the end are more or less presented in an orderly manner. But in between, in between we are not able to find out such an order. And uh, to find such an order is, is in, a, in a way uh, a difficult <clears throat> situation for us. Now as we study uh, the public ministry, we, uh, since we said that it is uh, Jesus' ministry was in a way uh, believed to have lasted three years, we have three different stages of Jesus' public ministry. And for our for our for our understanding, uh, we have uh, we have divided these stages uh, into three. And each and every stage has a specific purpose or a specific feature that we can find as we move through studying the public ministry of Jesus. The first year or the first stage is called as the year of entry. The year of entry. Now this is the stage, this is the period or this is the time during which Jesus started the public ministry and he gradually got the attention of the public. When we look at the, uh, the, 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 the ministry during this particular year, the year of entry, we can see that most of this period was spent in Judea. The second stage is the stage of fame or the year of fame. The second stage is the year of fame. See, Jesus' fame spread far and wide. More, the miracles that he performed, the healings that he that were that happened because of him, the his fame uh, went uh, went across, uh, was spread across all people, all all town, and many people from near and far came down to get healing from him to see the miracles that he was performing, and we can see that most of this year was spent in active ministry in Galilee. The third stage we see is the stage or the year of opposition. The first stage was the year of entry. The second stage was the year of fame. And the third stage is the year of opposition. Now, when Jesus' fame grew, at the same time, we also find that towards the end of his ministry, the public acceptance declined in a manner. The number of enemies increased and Jesus was, also, was on constant attack by the people and there was constant criticism against him and we find and we see that all this ended in crucifixion the first six months of this particular the year of opposition we can see was spent in Galilee and the last six months he was in Judea for our class today we'll be only dealing with the first stage that is the year of entry 
Now, as I, as as we begin, we, we as we as we started this class, I told you that we have only limited records on the first part of Jesus' public ministry, and it is John, Saint John, who gives us a detailed information about certain events. We have seen the preparation for the public ministry, and there we saw the importance of fasting and temptation, and what all happened at that particular time. After the fasting and temptation, when we read the gospel according to St. John, we see that Jesus meets John the Baptist. And this meeting, as recorded in the gospel according to St. John, takes place in three consecutive days. The first day, John the Baptist sees Jesus and spontaneously announces. It is recorded in John chapter 1 verses 29 to 34 wherein John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And he continues. And towards the end of verse 34, we see John the Baptist saying, I saw the Spirit descend as a dove from heaven, and it remained on him. The second day, we see that John pointed Jesus to two of his disciples, and we see that they followed him. One of them was Andrew, and we guess that the other person was John, who was the son of Zebedee. Andrew, we see at that particular moment, introduced his brother Simon to Jesus. On the third day, as Jesus started to go out to Galilee, we see that he invited Philip and Nathaniel to follow him. We see that as this, this incident occurred, we see that Jesus left the place of John the Baptist's work and he set off to Galilee to the north with the new disciples. We see that he had been invited for a wedding ceremony at Cana in Galilee. Jesus attended this wedding ceremony and there we see that Jesus performed the first miracle of turning water into wine. Now this, this particular miracle was in a way uh, helpful to confirm the faith of his disciples and they started to believe Jesus as their Messiah. And there is also one more another importance for this particular incident. This particular incident also uh, portrays or in a way shows the modus operandi of Jesus and John the Baptist were different. Both had different ways of working. When we look at both their working style, both their living style, uh, we see that John the Baptist lived like a monk with his disciples in the wilderness and invited people to go to him. Whereas Jesus on the other hand went right into the midst of the people with the good news. He entered the life situations of the common people. John the Baptist, his emphasis was on the judgment aspect. But Jesus, we see that his emphasis declared the joy of the kingdom. And without further delay, we see that Jesus returned to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. And it is here we see that Jesus went into the temple and cleansed the temple by driving out the merchants and the gold traders. One thing that is uh, amazing or astonishing uh, to us when we read that particular portion is that all the merchants were forced to obey him. One of the reasons might be because they saw the divine glory on Jesus' face and the light of the holiness that shone on him and they also considered him to be a prophet. Jesus by now, by this time, had performed many miracles during the festival and many, believers, many, many people started to believe in him. And it is during this time that on, on, on one night, we see that a Pharisee, named Nicodemus comes to visit Jesus. The conversation that Nicodemus had with Jesus, uh, during this particular conversation we see that Jesus tried to bring out or expounded the message of the kingdom, the nature of the kingdom and the conditions for entering this particular kingdom. It is mentioned in John chapter 3 verses 1 to 15. There, this particular discourse, this particular dialogue that G Nicodemus had with Jesus left a deep impression on Nicodemus and we see that in a way it really altered or changed uh, Nicodemus life as we come towards the later part or the end, towards the end of Jesus ministry uh, we see what Nicodemus did for Jesus 
by turning out to be an active disciple rather than being a silent disciple. Now after this particular incident, we have very little information about his activities during the first year. But there is one important significant uh, event that happened during this time. And it, is, it happened when Jesus retreated uh, with his disciples to Judea and was engaged in baptism. There we see that Jesus himself was not engaged in the baptism. It was the disciples who baptized many, which is recorded in John chapter 4 verses 1 to 3. Now, my dear friends, the popularity of Jesus was growing like anything. And the disciples of John, seeing this, reported this to John the Baptist. The disciples of John the Baptist were very jealous that Jesus was baptizing more people than John the Baptist. But the response that John the Baptist gives to his disciples is something that is worth understanding and implementing or making it, taking it as a model for our own life. John the Baptist told the disciples that Jesus was the bridegroom and he was only the friend of the bridegroom. And it is at this particular moment he says a beautiful verse which I believe should be the motto of all Christian workers. All who claim themselves to be Christians, I believe this should be the motto wherein John the Baptist says, he must increase and I must decrease. It is Jesus who must increase in each and every life situation and it is we as individuals who must decrease for that. We see that the first three Gospels, they do not record any happenings in the, uh, in, in the place of Judea. All the three Gospels, the first three Gospels, we, start, we see that they start with the mission of Jesus in Galilee. Now you might wonder or there might be a question that comes to our mind. Why are the Synoptic Gospel writers silent, silent, silent about these incidences? Now one of the reasons might be that they did not get much information during this period about this period when they wrote the Gospels. And so they recorded Jesus' mission in Judea only at the time during the time of crucifixion. We, as we have also seen that John also gives very few incidents that happened during this particular time. And it is also quite possible that Jesus must have realized that the people are not yet ready or prepared to accept him as Messiah. So there are chances that he might have retreated to the banks of Jordan and joined with John the Baptist mission of preparing the people. But by the end of the year we know that John the Baptist was imprisoned and he was beheaded and by this time Jesus had reached Galilee and had started his mission. Now since Jesus realized that he had a strong opposition in Jerusalem, he shifted to Galilee where he had greater acceptance. After getting a grip in Galilee, Jesus thought of moving to Jerusalem and continue his ministry. The year of entry is what we discussed today in this class. In the next class, we will be dealing with the year of fame and consequently, we will also be dealing with the year of opposition. Though the things, incidences are very less, though it might not be chronologically arranged, as John the uh, Gospel writer says, if everything had to be mentioned, all the books in this world would not have sufficed. But these little incidences, they help us to understand who this Jesus really was. What was the focus of his ministry, the purpose of his ministry and that is what we need to take into consideration. So before we end this class, uh, let us close uh, this class with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the things we have learned today. Thank you for the things that we have experienced and also we thank you for the things that we were able to discover today. Help us, O oh Lord, to remember it all. Heavenly and gracious Father, we ask you to continue to walk beside us and always mold us. And O oh Lord, we pray that as these children progress each and every day, as they strive to become a better and a stronger person in you, we pray that you may guide their actions, you may guide their thoughts, you may guide their words, and you may guide their deeds. Heavenly and gracious Father, may your ever-present help be always available to each and every child. 
continue to be with us as we face these turbulent times. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you, dear children.